All right. Let's, uh, let's get some further context on your testimony. And I want to start with um, beliefs that Greg McMichael told you he had concerning Mr. Arbery okay. uh, in the neighborhood, okay? Yes, sir. So the, uh, the state read the part, or had you read the part, where um, they thought he was coming from some house under construction down the street, yes, right? Yes, sir. You have your transcript up there, your I body do. cam. Let's go to page six, line six. And while you're getting there, Mr. McMichael actually went through the story with you two or three times. Several times, yes, sir. Right. And we were looking at one of those times when he went through it just now with the state mm -hmm. on direct, right? Yes, sir. But he had already told it to you once before and he even told it to you it, another time. Again, yes, sir, he right. told me several times. And, and part of that was because of the interruptions that were occurring mm -hmm. and you had to stop and start. Yes, sir. Okay. The other part of that was for clarification purposes. Right. And, and that's a police technique, have somebody tell the story a couple times, see if it stays the same. Yes, sir. His stayed the same. Objection. That's for the jury to determine. Relevance. That's the same. Just go ahead and ask a different question. Uh, I'm sorry. Was the, the objection sustained? Yeah, I'm sorry. My microphone's not. It was sustained. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're at the page six, line six. He's. This is the first round through the story. Am mm -hmm. I right? Yes, sir. And um, you're talking to him, and he's describing to you who this guy is, who he thinks he is, and you with me at line six, he says, this is Greg McMichael talking to you, right out here, and I imagine on the body cam he's pointing, as he says here, pointing down the street. Objection, is there a question, compound question? Oh, that's, that's fine, you're zeroing him on the, the question, okay. right, go ahead. I'm breaking it down. So when he says right out here, without turning on the whole video and all, when a person says right out here, he's pointing at some uh, I'd have to watch the video. I don't okay. recall. Well, let's go on. He says, this guy whom we've seen on video numerous times breaking into these other houses, he comes hauling ass down the street. I mean, he's got it hooked up. That's what he said to you? Yes, sir. That's accurate. And again, when he said breaking into these other houses later on in your synopsis as it was characterized your report you wrote in it that Mr. McMichael reported to you that he believed this guy had been breaking into houses in the neighborhood right prior yes if you'll go to page 26 line 10 and we're just going to do Two more of these that weren't found out just now. Is this at line 10, Mr. McMichael talking to you, but there's another person that has now come up, another police officer named Sergeant Leska? Uh, yes, sir. And you, you know who Sergeant Leska yes, sir. is, right? And so you're standing there, it's being recorded, but you're involved, I guess, in the conversation, even though he's now talking to Sergeant Leska. I would have to watch the video, but I believe so. All right, well, looking at your transcript at line 10, Mr. McMichael says to you and Sergeant Leska, uh, he's the one breaking in all these houses out here. He said that to you too? Yes, sir. Okay. Go to page 30, and we'll go to line 18. <coughs> Now, another person's walked up. This is Christy Rozier, right? Yes, sir. And Christy Rozier is uh, the coroner of Glenn County? One of, yes, sir. So Christy Rozier is standing there, and, and you're still involved in the conversation um, and talking with Christy Rozier and Greg McMichael, and I'm at line 18. Well, let's go to 16. 
Well, he makes frequent trips to the neighborhood and gets caught on video cameras like every third or fourth night, breaking into places, and nobody's been able to catch him. That's what he said to you? That's what he injected into our conversation, yes. With the conversation with you with and, and, and Ms. Rozier. Rozier? Yes, sir. Okay. And so earlier when you read that no one has ever, ever been able to catch him, mm -hmm. Uh, you understood in the context of the conversation that we're not just talking about police, uh, but also neighbors and Mr. McMahon. At the time, I was unfamiliar with any 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 kind of crime in Still Shores. Yeah. That's you didn't not my, have any background on that. No, sir. That's not my typical zone. That's not where I usually patrol. I'm not very familiar with the area. Okay. All right. Let's go back to. Um, Page 13, line 7. We're going to do a different topic now. This is where, Mr. McMichael, you saw that he had blood on his hand, right? Yes, sir. And you understood, you learned that he got that blood on his hand because Mr. Arbery had fallen face down on the street and he had reached under his torso and pulled his arm out to see if he had a gun in his hand. He said he grabbed his arm and pulled his arm out, yes sir. For the purpose of For the purpose of checking to see if he had a firearm, yes sir. If he had a firearm. Or a weapon, I believe he said. A weapon. All right. And he told you he he did that because he had believed that this guy may have been armed. That's what he said, yes sir. And he told you that the reason he ran in his house and got his 357 before he pursued this man is because he doesn't take chances. If he thinks somebody's armed, he's going to be armed. Uh, see, he said he doesn't take chances. And you understood in the context of the conversation that he's saying, I'm getting my gun because I'm not going to take a chance that he's That's armed. Well, if you understand in the context of the conversation, this is about what Craig McMichael is saying. It's for the jury to determine. I'm just establishing the context for the part of what this interview was and how it was meant, what, what he, he understood it to me. I think you asked in terms of what Greg, what he understood Greg McMichael to mean. Uh, that's sustained then as a speculation on the witness part. Well, at any rate, the part you read is in the context of it, he's telling you why he went in his house and got his gun. He told me he went into his house to get his gun. All right. 